In the 70s and 80s, sharks in general in the U.S. were considered an underutilized resource, and in the North Atlantic, fishermen were encouraged to fish for shark. The dusky and sandbar sharks were targeted for commercial fishing. There was a market for the carcass meat and fins. The main target were the fins, because especially sandbar sharks, dusky sharks, these large coastal sharks have large fins that were very valuable to the market, and that's really what drove the market. And I'm talking about legal, not illegal, shark fin trade. So the sandbar shark was the main targeted species of the bottom long line commercial fishery. It's also called recreationally. We saw that the status of the stock had been deteriorating and so our management branch has imposed through the years different measures to uh, reduce the amount of catch. In 1993, trip limits, a 4,000 pound catch limit and a 5% rule for fins was imposed. However, stock assessments over the next 15 years reveal that the sandbar shark population in the North Atlantic continued to decline, and eventually their catch was prohibited. If we completely forbid the take of the species, then we wouldn't be getting any, any information. A research fishery program was created which allows fishermen between 5 to 10 vessels to fish for prohibited shark species. The reason that we have the shark research fishery is that the stock assessment, although the sharks were still overfished, still allowed for a small, very small quota to be harvested and still allow the population to recover. They have 100% observer coverage on every single trip and the observers sample a large proportion of the catch for science. We collect the vertebrae for aging the animal, we collect the reproductive tracts for reproductive studies looking into reproductive periodicity, looking at fecundity, the amount of pups that a shark may have. With the imposed fishing limits and eventual prohibited fishing over the last 20 years for the slow-growing, slow-reproducing sandbar and dusky shark populations, scientists are now seeing signs of improvement. Now we believe that because of a number of issues, especially the imposition of lower quarters for fisheries, these declines have decelerated and stopped, and in some cases we are starting to see some rebound of these populations. What happens is that the, the total number or biomass of animals has declined so much that it's going to take a long time, in some cases decades, for these populations to be at a level that we consider to be efficient for fishing. So we've had stock assessments for sandbar sharks since approximately 1996. The reason for doing these assessments is to evaluate the status of the stock with respect to this benchmarks that we have and so to eventually get to a point where we can say okay the stock has rebuilt and you can catch so many animals sustainably because that's the goal to catch them sustainably in the long term. Sandbar sharks are historically the most valuable shark because of their fins and also their meat is, is sold um, for table fare so this allows them to still maintain some economic viability by still allowing a, a small segment to, to still fish for sandbar sharks, but it also allows us to gather current biological information on how they're growing, what their reproductive status is, what their abundance trends are, and all that information will be used in the next sandbar shark stock assessment. Sharks not only represent an important resource for commercial and recreational fishing communities, they are also vital to the health of ecosystems they inhabit. While federal fisheries laws are designed to ensure sustainable shark populations, cooperative research by commercial fishermen is a key component for supporting sustainable fishery management of sharks in the Northwest Atlantic.